<laughs> You're doing great. It's YouTube day. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna come up with a new intro. That would be best. So this was my warm up um, DIY, uh, just because I haven't done anything in a long time because we're in quarantine. Is that the right phrasing? In quarantine? Under quarantine? In quarantine. In quarantine? We're in quarantine. And so for the past like week and a half, all I've done is uh, sit on the couch and play Sims. But we're gonna make things, not this. Follow me. Don't get scrubs in the uh, shot because I don't want to be <laughs> copyright striked. Co copyrighted. Copyright infringement. Boy. <sighs> Let's go outside. Oh, it's cold. So I will be taking this ratty old coat. Got to back up a little bit because oh, you don't have the whole. There you go. Yeah, right there. No, can you see it? Yeah, and you can see the pup too. <gasps> Don't even joke about it. Just kidding. I'm actually just using this old blanket and making a new coat. Okay, Rich? You want to help? The first thing I did was I removed the buttons, and then I actually didn't end up using those, so let's fast forward. Next, I took the belt out of the coat, and I unpicked the buckle. Is that a buckle? Would you call that a buckle? It's a buckle. That I actually did end up using later, so we're gonna uh, put that to the side. And then I actually started to pick apart, ooh, pick apart. Sorry, pick apart the coat itself. So I removed a sleeve first, and then I realized there were more buttons that I hadn't cut off before, so I did that and pretended I was gonna use them later. And then I turned the sleeve inside out and uh, started picking apart the pieces. When I started the project, I was gonna line the new coat, but uh, it turns out I'm lazy and I didn't do that, so we're gonna skip ahead through all the shots of me just picking out lining. I just found all my lost bobby pins. And we're back. Just kidding, that's more lining. All right, here's fabric. So I started picking out the pocket, which actually I didn't end up using either. All right, finally, I started picking apart the body of the coat. So I started with the waist seam so I could separate the top half from the bottom half. And then I just kept going and wherever there was a seam, I ripped the seam until I had individual pieces. When I was finally done tearing the thing apart, we got to the really exciting part. Ironing. Yeah, I just ironed all the pieces flat. So if you don't have a nice quarantine jigsaw puzzle on hand, this is probably the next best thing. Getting all the pattern pieces to fit on this not very large blanket, which has a pattern on it and was probably not the best choice. But after giving up a few times, we finally did it. Though I did have to sacrifice the collar and the cuffs. And this guy had to go against the grain, but it's fine. If I were at all professional, I would have pinned these pieces down or used weights of some sort, but uh, no, I just cut them out. And then laid them. I started with the easy part and pinned the skirt pieces to each other, right sides together. And then fortunately I left one half of the coat intact because I had to match up the pieces because I had no idea what was what. Once I figured it out, I pinned the bodice pieces right sides together, and I tried to line everything up as symmetrically as possible. I redid that one. And now we sew and see the puppy. I chose red thread because I knew I was going to be doing some top stitching on the bodice pieces, and I wanted it to look 
intentional and match. So after sewing the bodice pieces, I went and pressed those seams down and then pinned them flat so I could do said top stitching, which all I did was use a longer stitch and sew right along the seams. And then I went back to the floor and pinned together more bodice pieces and sewed them together. Since these are the seams under the arms, I didn't do any top stitching on them. And then, wow, look, more bodice pieces. How many bodice pieces are on this thing? And then, surprise, I sewed them together. And then I went to line up the bodice with the skirt, and then Reggie was like, no, you're not ready to do that yet. And I was like, you know what? You're the smartest dog in the world. Actually, I need to pin these shoulders together so that it stays on a body. Yeah, Reggie was super helpful through all of this, but I guess that's what I get for um, making a coat out of a blanket on the floor with a dog. So I sewed those shoulder seams together, so I had a sweet little vest. I tried it on a few times, but um, I looked really gross, so I didn't record that. Next, I laid the original piece of the coat over top of the skirt so I could see where the pleats were. Um, my mistake though, because I actually only did the pleats on the back piece of the skirt and not the front sides, so it came out a little wonky, but it's fine. All right, wow, I guess I should talk more because this took a really long time. Uh, what I did was measure out the distance between the pleats on the coat piece and then measured it out on the blanket piece. But instead of just relying on the measurements, I also made sure to match it up with the pattern of the fabric so that it would be symmetrical. And then I stitched the pleats in place so then I could pin the bodice to the skirt, which actually I had to trim the bodice down because all the pieces were different lengths. And then I pinned them to the skirt and I tried to match up the print as best as possible so that again, it would be symmetrical. I'm sorry, I'm so nasally right now. I swear I don't always sound like this. My allergies are just so bad. Actually, I probably do always sound like this because my allergies are always bad, so never mind. And then I sewed the bodice to the skirt, being super careful over all the pleats and making sure, making sure everything stayed lined up nicely. Ignore the extra skirt fabric, like I said, I forgot to do some pleats. And then we did the sleeves, which uh, were two pieces. I didn't realize that there were like sleeve gussets, but there are, so I pinned them together. Also, don't worry, I did cut off the fringe on the end of the sleeves. And then surprise, I sewed the sleeves. Ooh, sorry, that was a lot of S's. S's, 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 S's. And then I pinned the sleeves into their respective sleeve holes, which is super fun. I just tried to, again, make them as symmetrical as possible and make sure everything lined up nicely and that the sleeves fit properly in the hole, which they actually did surprisingly well. It was, it was a nice, it was a nice surprise. And then I was lucky enough that the armhole fit over the arm of the sewing machine perfectly when I took that extra piece out, so it made it super easy to sew the sleeves into place. After that, I was too dumb to realize that um, there should have been pleats in there and I just cut off the extra fabric and Reggie was probably yelling at me the whole time, but I was too dumb to listen. And then, like I said, I cut off the sleeve fringe. And then after that, wait, wait no, I didn't do that yet. Hold on. So before I did the belt, I also went over all the raw edges with a zigzag stitch and then folded that under, pressed it, and then went over it with a straight stitch so everything would have a nice clean hem. Um, but it's perfectly possible that I was just too lazy to record that and so I have no footage of it. Anyways, for the belt, I used these pieces that I had cut out that were supposed to be for lining, which I, I you know, didn't do. I just folded these pieces in half around the belt and then lined them up and cut them out to be the same size and length. And and then I went and sewed those two pieces together since the pieces weren't long enough on their own. And then actually, I think I didn't get footage of this either, but I pressed that out and then folded it in half and pressed it flat and then pinned it so that I could sew it into one long tube. Uh, just a heads up, uh, I'm gonna have my mic off probably for most of the games. Uh, my wife's sewing next to me. And then anyways, like I said, sew it into one long tube and then also sew over the end and take all the pins out. And then the super fun part is turning it 
right side out, which is, yep, just as fun as it looks. So we're gonna speed that up. Sorry, this really did take forever and it was terrible. There we go. I was too lazy to move my camera back to my ironing board, but I did press the whole thing out and then I went over the whole thing with the top stitch so that it would lay nice and flat. So what I did here was make sure that the buckle or whatever you want to call it would fit over the end there and it did, thank goodness. So I took it back off and trimmed the fabric on the edge of the belt and then ran that raw edge under a zigzag stitch so it wouldn't come unraveled and then I just put the buckle back on and stitched down the end. Now since I'm far too lazy to finagle with tiny bits of fabric and sew belt loops, all I did was grab some embroidery thread and a needle and I just threaded some belt loops on the back and the two sides of the coat so that the belt would stay on. And that's the last step, guys. Yeah, I was gonna record a nice ending here, but um, we live right near the fire department. So um, yeah, this is what you're gonna get. Thank you so much for watching. I know uh, we don't really have much else to do right now if you're just stuck at home like me. Please comment and like and subscribe and I'm gonna try to do more videos of stuff during this fun little quarantine because um, otherwise I'm gonna go crazy. So yeah, thanks for watching!